<clears throat> Hi guys. This could be quite possibly the single nastiest, ugliest, just eat razor blades for breakfast day that I have uh, seen in years. There, there is virtually no way it could be any uglier and more depressing than today. Even Sancho Panza has no desire to go get squirrelies. There's no squirrelies out there. The squirrelies are all in bed. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm just sitting here pretty much in a fetal position thinking about 2019. Jesus. Anyway, so it is time to get back to work. Get out there and get it done. It is Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. As the world gets back to work, doing whatever the hell it is that, that people do with their lives. What the fuck do people do with their lives? Uh, anyway, what they're doing at the, the Guardian today, I am embarrassed to admit. I'm, I'm about ready to call up the Guardian and, and ask them to refund the goddamn $25 that I donated to them uh, as I do each year. That I want my goddamn money back. Uh, well, it was yesterday. I was sitting in this chair less than 24 hours ago talking about how in, in 2019, as as things just got completely fucked on this planet, how you were going to see more and more of this desperate hopium out there. Uh, I, I, when I was saying this, I was thinking more about the mainstream media. I'm not really sure where to place the Guardian. They, they don't know what the hell they are. Uh, but uh, anyway, I can't think of a better way. I, I, I can check one off of my, uh, of my doomsday uh, predictions. Uh, anyway, let's start off getting back to work with some hopium. Right here from The Guardian. The Guardian, looking forward to 2019 with the headline, Momentum is Growing. Hmm. Reasons to be hopeful about the environment in 2019. That was bullshit. So, uh, of course, let's start off uh, with a little survey of 2018 to, say, uh, to, to, to set the stage for the hopium of 2019. As we reflect on a year of extreme weather and ominous climate talks, Guardian environment writer Fiona Harvey, who should be fired and sent to work at the, uh, at the Heartland Institute, clueless moron Fiona Harvey explains why 2019 could see some much needed breakthroughs. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yes, okay. All right, Fiona. <coughs> Just uh, take us on a quick tour of 2018 to set the stage for your hopium, to stuff your hopium pipe. <coughs> Extreme weather hit the headlines throughout 2018. No shit, Sherlock. From the heat wave across much of the northern hemisphere, which saw unprecedented wildfires in Sweden, drought in the UK, and devastating wildfires in the US, to floods in India and typhoons in Southeast Asia. According to the World 
meteorological organization last year was the fourth hottest on record and confirms a trend of rising temperatures that is a clear signal that we are having an effect on the climate. No shit, Sherlock. Droughts, floods, fierce storms, and heat waves, as well as sea level rise, are all expected to increase markedly as a result. <clears throat> no shit, Sherlock. I'm seeing all sorts of reasons to smoke that opium. Late in the year, there was also the starkest warning ever from scientists of what our future will be if, if we allow climate change to take hold. Ah, the IPCC, the global body of the world's leading climate scientists, which has been producing regular reports on the state of climate science since 1988, produced its latest comprehensive overview examining what our future will look like if, if we undergo one and a half C of warming, if we go. That does not sound like a lot. Most people would be hard put to notice a temperature difference of one and a half degrees, but in climate terms, one and a half C above pre-industrial levels is enough to take us into the danger zone. It would see the mass die-off of coral reefs, the extinction of species, rising sea levels, wet areas of the world becoming wetter and dry areas drier, and the decline of agricultural productivity across, across swaths of the globe. No shit, Sherlock. I know that I've got, I know that I've got the hopium uh, burning in my pipe from Fiona's report so far. <clears throat> that is a future we should obviously try to avoid. Hmm. But the UN Climate Conference in Poland that end of the year's climate related events in December showed little sign that the urgency of the scientist warnings had been heeded. Instead, countries dis discussed a rule book, a rule book for putting the 2015 Paris Agreement into action. Come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Including such arcane matters as how countries measure and verify their emissions and how often they should even report on them <coughs> and rouse over carbon credits. In Poland, there were no firm commitments to ramp up countries' national targets in line with scientific advice, and this is unlikely to happen before 2020 at the earliest. Hmm. On current national emissions cutting targets, we are now in for about 3C of warming. Yet, yet the IPCC warned that if we want to avoid one and a half sea of warming, we have about 12 years to bring global emissions under control and swiftly move to just half of their current level. That represents a massive shift needed in the global economy, and <coughs> yet emissions worldwide look to be moving upward again. Ha! There was also bad news from the U.S. at the talks, which played little part as Donald Trump prepares to withdraw from the Paris Agreement, <coughs> except to hold a side event at the climate conference celebrating a bright future for coal. Hmm. Looked at this way, the omens from 2018 were not 
Good. No shit, Sherlock. And now we have the little the, the little turn. Fortunately, however, 2019 may indeed be a breakthrough year. Public opinion is mobilizing around the world, and politicians and businesses are paying attention. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yes. There will be a series of high-profile events that will engage the public and governments and may may provide a better way forward than was managed last year. And what is the number one reason for Fiona's hope for a breakthrough year in 2019? Chief among them is the promise of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres to hold a summit for world leaders that will require them to face up to the dangers of climate change head on. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Guterres is uncompromising warning in Poland that it would be immoral and suicidal not to take firm and urgent action commensurate with the scale of the problem. No shit, Sherlock. Leaders will be put on the spot and will come under very public pressure as coalitions of civil society groups seek to put their case around the summit and in the lead up to it. And this might be my favorite one of, uh, of here. Okay. <clears throat> The role of women who are among the most vulnerable to climate change. <laughs> uh, the role of women. Yeah, like uh, I, I guess men are less vulnerable to climate change than women. The role of women who are among the most vulnerable to climate change will be highlighted and the role of young people who will have to live with the consequences of their elders' mistakes in a warming world. All right, and don't forget the French president, Emmanuel Macaroni, is also holding a One World Summit plan for the summer. Yeah, like Macaroni is still going to have a fucking job uh, by the summer. Where is Macaroni's uh, approval ratings? I think they're around 10%. Uh, yeah, so all, all, uh, all uh, Macaroni uh, will be holding his One World Summit at which the focus will be on persuading businesses to take a leading role in fighting climate change, uh -huh. investing in projects to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions and changing the way they use energy. There are clear signs of hope on climate change also in the rapidly falling cost of Renewable energy technology, which is now competitive with fossil fuels. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. And the keep it in the ground campaign. Yeah, the keep it in the ground campaign uh, as we hit 100 million barrels of oil for the first time in history in the closing weeks of 20. 18, and uh, as I predicted yesterday, the uh, planet will pull more fossil fuels out of the ground in 2019 than any year in history. Uh, we have Fiona telling us that the Keep It in the Ground campaign has succeeded. Oh yeah! 
the Keep It in the Ground campaign has succeeded. It succeeded in what? What the fuck are they keeping in the ground? We got a hundred million barrels of this shit every day coming out of the fucking ground. Yes, the Keep It in the Ground campaign has succeeded in encouraging many investors to move their money out of fossil fuel stocks. But, most of all, most of all, I guess this is the most of all uh, reasons to be uh, optimistic here in 2019 about the planet's environment, but most of all, the civil society campaigns, which have ramped up in 2018, look set to increase their momentum in the coming year, are taking effect. Public opinion around the world is that our leaders, governments, and businesses should be doing more on this vital issue. And here we go, guys. I, I, I'm sorry talking about women being the most affected by climate change. Here we are at the second to the last sentence. This can be seen in some unexpected ways such as the rise of veganism and a term I have never heard, flexitarian eating, as people seek to reduce their impact on the climate from eating meat. Through well publicized and effective movements and actions, more and more people are refusing silently to acquiesce in ignoring the dangers to the climate. Take Let's look at some of the uh, the reactions to uh, oh God the, the first two comments are talking about the grand solar uh, minimum. And then I'm going to have to, uh, to uh, cheer on climate change denier Merlin. <clears throat> Take it away, Merlin. With comments like this, meaning uh, with articles like this in The Guardian, who can take this hoax seriously? Quote, the role of women who are among the most vulnerable to climate change, dot, dot, dot. This can be seen in some unexpected ways, such as the rise of veganism and flexitarian eating as people seek to reduce their impact on the climate from eating meat. You know, even the fucking climate change deniers like Merlin getting six thumbs up I'm going to have to give Merlin a uh, Merlin the seventh thumbs up. Uh, even climate change deniers understand on one level uh, more than the little limp dick greenies uh, how fucked we are. All right, what are some related stories? What the believers are denying what the believers are denying. Uh, I'm going to have to come back to that story. Uh, what the believers are denying is that we are completely fucked. Uh, anyway, that's another rant for another day. Right now I need to change shirts and head over to Collapse Chronicles. We're going to go over to Bloomberg and look at the uh, story, A Warming World Needs Nuclear Power. Since I can't do it on uh, Collapse Chronicles, I'm going to do it here because I love it when I can push both buttons at the same time. A Warming World Needs Nuclear Power power. No Sherlock. Sh 
Smoke them if you got them, guys. Oh, I need to start packing up my gas-sucking truck and uh, think about heading to Florida to get away from this. My God, I mean, I mean, even Sancho is uh, has no interest in squirrels. Bye, guys.